Hi, welcome back. We have Kate here joining us from the Pet Pantry. And who is with you today, Kate? Well, this is Kudos. And he's a male. He's neutered, vaccinated, microchipped, and ready to be adopted. I believe he's a little bit older. I don't have the exact age on him. Uh, on him, but very sweet. Oh, well, hello. Welcome to the show. And Kate, you have some fun facts to tell us about, um, you know, the pet pantry, but mostly let's talk about how COVID has specifically affected um, rescue organizations and the pet pantry specifically. Yes. A lot of people don't realize how uh, COVID really impacted the rescue world, even just the veterinarian world. Um, Back when things shut down in March to about middle of April, spay and neuters were considered uh, elective surgeries. And so therefore there were a lot of especially cats that were not able to come in to be spayed and neutered. And that would have been through our trap and release program that would have been owned to animals. And that also would have been adoptable, uh, you know, cats that would have come in through a foster program. We really struggled to bring kittens in because we weren't sure when we were gonna be able to spay and neuter them. So there was a real backlog um, and it created a, a really long wait time for people to be able to resume getting their animals spayed and neutered. He is fascinating. I, I'm curious to see where- <laughs> I think we're gonna get up there. <laughs> This is live TV, my friends, and so we're just, we're following along to see what he's up to. So yes, after spay and neuter surgeries were able to resume, and that would have been the middle of May, uh, our rescue department had been working weeks even prior to that to really build our foster family program. So I think we went from about 20 uh, consistent foster families, I think we had 50 to 60 families um, all summer working um, it's nothing for our rescue to have 100 cats in our uh, care at any one time. So when the public comes in, sometimes you'll see an empty cage and you'll think, well, are they you know, working at capacity? But we are absolutely always working, if not above capacity, because we have to factor in all those kittens and cats that are in foster care. If you wanted to become a foster care fur parent, how do you do that? There is an application on our website, petpantrylc.org you will find under volunteer opportunities. You can fill out the foster family application, you send it in, they review it, and then um, they will give you a call. And if they don't, certainly feel free to call us or email us. Um, I know that they are always looking to find new foster families. That's wonderful, especially because, you know, maybe you're you're trying to help the rescue organizations, um, but at the same time, you're not able to do it full time. So. That, and I think for families who maybe can't commit to having animals in their home all the time, their own pets, this is sometimes a great way to, okay, you can have pets when you're not traveling, but when you wanna go on vacation, you take a break and then you don't have foster kittens in your home during that time. It's sort of a nice, I know for retirees, it's kind of a nice opportunity. Oh, that's great. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, I would love to have a little bit more life in my home, this would be a wonderful route for you. Yeah. Kate, how else has COVID affected your pet pantry specifically? Well, with all those extra kittens, all of those extra family foster families, part of our foster program is all of the supplies and medical, medical care are provided for you. It's not out of a foster family's pocket. So it affected us in just the amount of supplies, medicine, oftentimes kittens need um, antibiotics, they have upper respiratory infections, they have eye infections, so it's the medications, it's the food, it's the supplies, it's the litter. Um, certainly that has just required us to fundraise and do those supply drives, you know, even harder to make sure that we have all the supplies on hand that we're going to need. If our viewers are thinking, maybe I can't have a pet in my home, but I would love to support your cause, is there a way that they could donate specifically to you? Absolutely. I do believe we do Amazon Smiles. Again, that you can find that information on our website. Also, I mean, we always take supplies and drop-offs at our facility on 26 Millersville Road. We take dog food, cat food. Even if it's open, we will take it to part of our food program. Um, canned food, dry food, treats, toys, dog beds, um, towels. We will even take gently used towels and bedding. 
um, you know, pretty much if you have a question as to if we want it, just give us a call or email us. Um, I'm sure we can probably find use. I, I think we're kind of talented that way. We can find use for almost anything. 